I am still thankful that young ladies and ladies restrooms and shire facilities, locker rooms um, are still safe legally from predators who possibly would enter and seek to do them harm. And I'm grateful that our legislature and our governor had enough foresight to know that uh, a young lady uh, should have the privilege of going into the restroom without worrying about someone coming in seeking to do her harm. My concern is I serve a perfect God who has never made a single mistake from all of eternity and that when he created the human race, he did not create the human race and say, uh-oh, I made a mistake. He created a human race, male and female, that is established in the book of Genesis and creation, that he made them male and female. And to look in the face of God and say, I know you created me a certain way, but you made a mistake. And I should have been male. I was born female or, or vice versa. I just don't believe that happens. But I have ministered to people who have these types, these types of problems. And I do so gladly. I try to help them find their true identity. I'm not a, uh, an enemy because I come down on the side of scriptural interpretation. I'm a friend. And the pastor who will stand in the pulpit and be honest with his people, who are eternity-bound people, is the best friend they have in this world. Because when we face God, eventually, and we all will, and we stand in his presence, we will be standing there one-on-one, -on -one, answering to the one who created us. And I want to make sure that no one can look at me and say, why didn't you tell me this? Well, I have one last opportunity, this side of eternity, to tell people that God loves you and God will forgive you and God will save you and God will help you to find your identity. I have the responsibility to tell people that. And I'm not an enemy by telling them the truth. I'm their friend.